In this class, we will discuss about plastids. When we think about plastid, I like to draw your attention to the green color of leaves and the coloration of leaves during autumn season. These colorations are often caused by some pigment molecules and the pigment molecules are present within the organelles called plastids. Plastids are large cytoplasmic organelles. As you see in the images, rounded membrane structures present within the cells are called plastids. They synthesize and store carbohydrates and the word plastids derived from a word called plastic cast. It means molded. The term plastid was coined by a scientist called Schimber in 19. 1885 and the plastids are broadly classified into two types chromoplast and leucoplast depending on whether they are having color or not when a plastid is having color it is called a chromoplast and if it doesn't have a color it is called a leucoplast let's see what is chromoplast pigmented or colored plastids are called chromoplast these chromoplasts are further divided into three based on the color of pigments present on them. And the classification of chromoplast is like this. They are classified into chloroplast, phaeoplast and rhodoplast. Chloroplasts are chlorophyll containing plastids and they are green pigmented. They are commonly present in higher plants and green algae. Pheoplasts are dark brown colored plastids and the coloration is due to the presence of the pigment fucosanthin. Fucosanthin can absorb light and transfer the energy to chlorophyll and they are mainly present in brown algae, diatoms and dinoflagellates. The third group of chromoplast is rhodoplast. They are red colored plastids. They contain the pigments phycoerythrin. They can absorb light and mainly present in red algae. The plastids are classified based on colored and colorless. The colored plastids are called chromoplast, and the second group is called leucoplast. Leucoplasts are plastids meant for storage. The colorless plastids are called leucoplast. They are not pigmented. They store food material and they do not involve in biosynthesis activities. Based on the compound stored within leucoplast, they are classified into amyloplast, allioplast and alluroplast. Amyloplasts are starch or carbohydrate storing plastids. Allioplasts are fat storing or lipid storing plastids. Alluroplasts or proteoplasts are protein storing plastids. So, plastids are broadly classified into chromoplast and leucoplast. Chromoplasts are colored plastids, leucoplasts are colorless plastids. Chromoplasts include chloroplast, pheoplast, and rhodoplast, whereas the colorless plastids, leucoplasts, include amyloplast, allioplast, and alluroplast. Chloroplasts are green colored plasmid which contain the pigment chlorophyll. In this image, this green coloration is due to the presence of chloroplast and the cells which contain chloroplast are called chloronchyma and they are having the function of photosynthesis. Size of chloroplast varies depending on the species. The higher plants like angiosperms have chloroplast 
having a length of 4 to 5 microns and a thickness of 1 to 3 microns. Depending on the plant species, number of chloroplast also varies or in a particular plant, each cell will contain constant number of chloroplast. The shape of chloroplast can vary with difference in plants. They can be spheroid, discoid or ovoid. In spirogyra, algae spirogyra, we can see the spiral shaped chloroplast. And in eulothrix, band shaped or griddle shaped chloroplast is seen. In Chlamydomonas, we can see a cup shaped chloroplast. Stellate or star shaped chloroplast is observed in Sigma. A reticulate or network type chloroplast is seen in Eudagonium. And so these are the different types of chloroplast or different shaped chloroplast present in plant kingdom. Coming to the ultrastructure of chloroplast, the chloroplast is bounded by two membranes. So this is the section of a chloroplast. They are having an outer membrane and an inner membrane. In between these two membranes there is a space. So, the chloroplast is bounded by two unit membrane, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The membranes are having a thickness of 40 to 60 angstrom and they are made up of lipids and proteins. These two membranes are separated by a space and that is called a periplastidal space. And this periplastidal space is having a diameter between 70 to 100 angstrom and it is filled with a less viscous fluid called periplastidal fluid. The periplastid fluid is not that thick, it is loose, watery. Coming to the outer membrane, the outer membrane of chloroplast is permeable, it will allow the passage of molecules while the inner membrane is selectively permeable or impermeable to many of the molecules. The inner cavity of plastid is filled with a colloidal substance and it is called a matrix or stroma. Stroma is a jelly like material and it is proteinaceous. In this stroma, there is circular double stranded DNA called chloroplast DNA are present. There are presence of 70S ribosomes, enzymes and starch grains within the stroma or the matrix within chloroplast. We can see flattened sac-like structures and these flattened sac-like structures are called thylakoids. The thylakoids are bounded. If you see the cross-section of these thylakoids, thylakoids are bounded with a single unit membrane. The chloroplast is having two layered unit membrane whereas thylakoid is having only a single layered unit membrane. The cavity inside thylakoid is called loculus. Thylakoids are having a diameter of 0.25 to 0.8 micrometer. 10 to 100 thylakoids are stocked together or arranged one above the other like a stack and this group is called a granum. There will be many grana within the chloroplast. The adjacent granas are connected together by connecting tubules and these connecting tubules are called frets or stromal lamellae or stromal thylakoids. If you see the internal view of thylakoids, they are single membrane bounded. Inner to the thylakoids, we can see some spherical particles. These spherical particles are called quantosomes. Quantosomes are group of pigment molecules. They are having chlorophyll molecules in the center surrounded by carotenoids. 
and these chondosomes are referred as photosynthetic units and they are meant for absorbing light during photosynthesis. Chondosomes are of two types pigment system 1 and pigment system 2. Pigment system 1 is found on the inner surface of thylakoid membrane whereas pigment system 2 are present in the outer surface of thylakoid membrane. So of the two pigment system one is present inner to thylakoid membrane and the other one is present periphery of the thylakoid membrane. On the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane along with pigment system molecules we can see coupling factors 1 and RUDP carboxylase. Coupling system 1 is ATPS enzyme meant for phosphorylation. RUDP carboxylase is the carbon dioxide acceptor and it accepts carbon dioxide for doing photosynthesis. Chloroplast also contains proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, carotenoids, chlorophyll and other minerals. The major component or the major functional component present within chloroplast are pigment molecules. The pigments present in chloroplast are of three types. They are chlorophylls, carotenoids and phycobilins. Mainly in higher group of plants we can see the presence of chlorophylls and carotenoids. If you see the pigment chlorophyll, chlorophyll is a green pigment present in plants and they are having a structure similar to hemoglobin but the iron is replaced, iron in hemoglobin molecule is replaced with magnesium and that is the difference between chlorophyll molecule and hemoglobin molecule. These molecules are asymmetrical. They are having a magnesium atom in the middle and it is a porphyrin derivative. And this molecule is having a pyrrole head, a phytole tail and a side group attached to the porphyrin ring. The head of chlorophyll molecule is hydrophobic while the tail group is hydrophilic. The head is formed of four pyrrole molecules and they are having a magnesium atom in the middle. Tail is a long hydrocarbon chain attached to the porphyrin ring. There is a side group or an R group present in the porphyrin ring. It determines the property of chlorophyll molecule. The side group determines the property of chlorophyll molecule. And in chlorophyll A, this R group is a methyl group, while in chlorophyll B, it is an aldehyde group. Chlorophyll molecules can absorb blue light in a range of 435 to 438 nanometer and red light at a range of 670 to 680 nanometer. By absorbing these nanometers, they emit or reflect green light. There are different groups of chlorophylls. There are chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, chlorophyll C and chlorophyll D. And in this table you can see the distribution of these chlorophylls. The chlorophyll A and B are present in higher plants and green algae. Whereas chlorophyll C in algae, dinoflagellates and diatoms. The chlorophyll D is present in red algae. Another group of molecules present along with chlorophyll and within plastids are called carotenoids. Carotenoids are yellow or orange pigments present in photosynthetic plants along with chlorophyll. They are of two types. The autumn coloration of leaves is due to the presence of carotenoids along with anthocyanin pigments. Carotenoids absorb blue-violet range of the visible spectrum and transfer light energy to chlorophyll for photosynthesis. In photosystems or quantasomes, chlorophyll molecules are present in the middle and the carotenoids surround the chlorophyll molecules. This will help to protect 
chlorophyll molecule from photo oxidation. Photo oxidation is the oxidation of chlorophyll molecule by molecular oxygen in higher light intensity. This can be prevented when chlorophyll molecules are covered with a layer of carotenoids. Chemically carotenoids are insoluble in water but they are soluble in organic solvents. Another one group of pigments which are present in red algae are called the phycobilins. They are conjugated proteins. They are of two types, phycocyanins and phycoerythrin. They are also present in blue-green algae. And these molecules are open chain porphyrin type molecule while chlorophyll contains cyclic porphyrin. If you see the internal structure of chloroplast, it also contains a DNA and the DNA present in chloroplast is double stranded and circular and this chloroplast DNA involved in cytoplasmic inheritance, protein synthesis and division of chloroplast. Chloroplast also contains ribosomes. Ribosomes are the organelles meant for protein synthesis. The ribosomes present in chloroplast are having a size of 70 Swedberg unit containing two subunits 50S and 30S. Since chloroplast contain DNA, they are called semi-autonomous organelle. There are different theories regarding origin of plastids. One of the theories, there are some colorless membranous structures are present within the cells. They are called proplastids. And this proplastid develop and mature and become plastids. This is one of the theory regarding origin of plastids. Second one is, since Plastids are containing DNA molecule from a pre-existing plastid at maturity. A new plastid will be formed by division of the parental chloroplast. The third theory is called the symbiotic origin. According to this theory, chloroplast is having DNA, it's on ribosome, so it is an individual cell, and this individual cell leaves symbiotically within eukaryotic organism. This is called theory of symbiotic origin. Within a cell, chloroplasts do diverse functions. Chloroplasts do the synthesis of all proteins required for photosynthetic metabolism and also the fun to perform the functions of chloroplast. Chloroplast synthesized starch or carbohydrate and it is stored within plastids. During photosynthesis, chloroplast absorbs carbon dioxide and reduces carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. During this process, oxygen is released. This oxygen is replenishing the environment and it is absorbed by all plants and animals. So, ecological balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide is maintained by chloroplast. And regarding plants which exhibit cytoplasmic inheritance, chloroplast DNA is playing a role. And the photosynthesis or the largest biochemical reaction happening in plants is carried out by chloroplast. These are the main functions of chloroplast. Thanks for your patient listening.